Hello everybody, my name is Mihir Patel. I'm a chemical engineer and the author of the Mihir's Handbook of Chemical Process Engineering. Today we will discuss chapter 6 on heat exchangers and chapter 38 optimization of heat exchangers. Now heat exchangers, uh, we are referring to the unfired heat exchangers, not the fired heaters. Uh, we are talking about the unfired heat exchangers. There are many types of heat exchangers. For example, you have the shell and tube heat exchangers which are uh, almost 85% of the exchangers are shell and tube type. Then you have the air cooled heat exchangers. So shell and tube and air cooled heat exchangers are the primary exchangers which are used in the chemical process industry. There are many other types which I have also covered in the uh, book. Uh, for example, plate and flame type exchangers which again have, um, have uh, other uh, types within that category. Cascaded, braised, welded. Then you have the spiral heat exchangers, printed circuit heat exchangers, twisted tube heat exchangers, gas gas regenerators. Then you have the uh, cubic block graphite heat exchangers. Uh, which are very specialized type used in certain services only. Uh, then you have the electric heaters. Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, uh, specifically on the shell and uh, tube heat exchangers and the air cooled heat exchangers. Now uh, we will start with the shell and tube heat exchangers. Uh, the shell and tube heat exchangers are designed as per, uh, as per TEMA classification. TEMA is Tubular Exchanger Manufacturers Association. And uh, the TEMA classification is of three types. So you have the B which is for chemical process service. Tema class C which is for general service uh, which is the least stringent of the three and Tema class R which is for refinery service which is the most stringent among the all of all the three types. Now uh, there are Tema types uh, uh, based on which the shell and tube exchangers are made. Uh, the, uh, the Tema type is classified into the front end, the shell type and the rear end. So if you see uh, in the front end you have the A category, B category, C and D. Uh, then in the uh, shell type which is the which is very important the shell type you have the e which is one pass shell so most of the exchanges are fabricated as per the e type so if you see a e l type so that is a fixed tube sheet on both ends and the single pass shell in the middle uh, so the shell types are e type f type which is a two pass shell with longitudinal baffle then you have the g type which is the split flow h type which is a double split flow j type is a divided flow k is a ketal type and then you have X which is a cross flow. So each and every specific shell type is used in specific services. For example, uh, in a SRU plant where you have the reheaters which are very low pressure drop services where you are heating the gas, you use the X type cross flow type because the pressure drops are very very less. And uh, the X type is normally of a block type, it is not a long uh, shell and tube type uh, because of the, uh, uh, it is a cross flow pattern and uh, thus you don't want dead ends at the end. So it becomes a block type category. Uh, similar to the front ends, you have the rear ends also in the Tema, which again, uh, like for example, L is uh, similar to the A type front end. Then you have the M, which is similar to the B type front end. Then you have N, P, S. S and T are basically the floating head types. U is a YouTube bundle. And then finally you have the W type. So the, this is the Tema classification based on which uh, the exchanges are designed. STRI normally is the software used for the design of the exchangers, shell and tube exchangers. Uh, STFS also is there, but primarily now STRI is a predominant software used. Uh, now this is as far as the uh, shell and tube exchangers are concerned. Now uh, it is very uh, important the process engineer has to understand when to use which type. Uh, for example, uh, uh, let's say you have a effluent uh, which is coming at uh, let's say 70 degrees centigrade and uh, you need to cool it down to around 50 degrees centigrade using cooling water. So you can use a AEL type, which is basically a, a fixed tube sheet. So when you open the tube sheet, you can clean the effluent side. And then, uh, uh, then finally, the uh, uh, shell side is a cooling water. So there you don't need any uh, cleaning opening. You can clean it using chemical cleaning or back flushing, etc. Now uh, the uh, 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 fluid allocation in a shell and tube exchanger is very important. So for example, uh, fluid allocation, let me give some examples. Now when you talk of the tube side, uh, fouling type uh, liquids, corrosive liquids, toxic liquids, low fluoride streams, high pressure streams, these are normally put on the tube side. Whereas on the shell side you have very viscous fluids, then condensing vapors, vaporizing fluids, fluids with very low delta P, these are put on the shell side. So uh, allocation also is a very important aspect, process engine has to decide. Uh, approach temperatures, temperature cross, these are all things that have to be looked into. Now when you have a temperature cross within an exchanger, it is, a, it is very difficult uh, to design the uh, single exchanger 
uh, you have to go into HDRI where you will get the stacked designs. So HDRI breaks the temperature so that you don't have temperature cross. So these are things that a process engine has to be mindful on. Uh, now the, uh, the parameters which are required for uh, doing the design in HDRI uh, is, is, uh, is for example on the shell side you have uh, the uh, uh, baffles are there, type of baffles are there, baffle spacing, baffle cut, then the tube spacing, then the uh, tube layout is there. These are all things that a uh, process engineer has to uh, play around with to optimize the exchangers. Similarly on the tube side you can have tube count, tube passes and then the tube size. Now in STRI there are uh, uh, certain streams which are very important for a process engineer to know. Uh, there is a, a main stream is the B stream which is the main cross flow heat exchange stream. You also have streams which are A stream, C stream, E stream, F stream. Uh, you can refer to the book for the details on the same. Uh, now uh, we will now go to the air cooled heat exchangers which are the other predominant exchanger which I mentioned. Now air cooled exchangers uh, are very different from cell and tube exchangers because in air cooled exchangers you have the capex as well as the opex to take care of because you have motors which run the fans. So air cooled exchangers are cooled using the air and uh, fans are uh, used to uh, 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 pass the air over the tubes thereby cleaning the process fluid. Now the, uh, the motor size is very important. So if you have a very large motor you have to be careful like the good licenses for example like UOP. They put a cutoff at 22 kilowatt as the upper size of the motor so that uh, your maintenance is uh, not an issue while removing the motors. However I have seen certain consultancies go with 50 kW or plus also. 55 kilowatt for example motors. Now uh, air cooled exchangers uh, because of this your OPEX also is very important. Uh, now air cooled exchangers have a lot of other things you have to look into. For example the location of the air cooled exchangers normally they are located on the pipe rack in the center of the plant so that the width of the pipe rack determines the width of the air cooled exchangers. Uh, so similar to that the control of air cooled exchangers is very different as compared to a shell and tube heat exchanger. Now uh, control of air cooled exchangers can be done with a bypass stream or you can have a louvers, you can have a ma uh, MAP what is called manual adjustable pitch, you can have a AVP which is auto variable pitch, you can have a, a, two, a, a two speed motor or you can have a variable uh, frequency drive. So all of these things are used to control the air cooled heat exchangers. Now uh, uh, these are the two principal types are described in brief. Uh, the handbook contains many many more details. Uh, please do visit the website www. Uh, dot chemical process engineering dot com for the handbook uh, which is uh, which will aid the process engineer in a very practical fashion to design heat exchangers please also like and subscribe to the channel thank you